Today we have a great show. We will discuss how to integrate your existing Rust application with Docker. Docker is a technology used to port your application to any systems. An example of that might be Google Cloud, Amazon Web Services, even Azure if you're into that kind of stuff. The intention is to run your Rust application anywhere. All you need to do is to pull a Docker image. The Docker image defines the OS, the dependencies, the ports, and everything else you need to get your system going. Containers look like a real computer to the applications running within it. Docker containers are defined using a Docker file. So let me show you how to do that. Security Union created a GitHub repository so that you can follow along. Docker files are defined using layers. Layers is a logical sequence of steps that Docker should use to build your image. Usually the first line is going to be either the base OS that you want to use or another Docker file. In this case, we're going to use the base image, which is uh, distributed by the Rust team. If we were to look under the hood, we'll see how the Rust base image is built. I looked at it a little bit and it turns out that it's based on Debian. Then we're going to define our working directory. This is going to be the directory that the system will default to when you connect through, through a TTY session. Then we are going to go ahead and copy our code to the slash app folder or directory. Let's go ahead and build our Docker image. To do that, you have to use Docker build. And then there are many options that you'll need. Here are the basic flags that I use. Dash T is used to provide a name for your Docker image. Then use dash, P, dash F to pass which Docker file should be used to build your Docker image. Dot is used here to define that you need to use the current directory as the base context for your Docker image. All right. So we have our Docker image built. Now, how do we use it? To do that, you have to use Docker Run. Docker Run has several options. Again, I'm just going to cover the basics. The first one is RM means that after you are done running, then go ahead and clean all the resources. A Docker image creates a Docker container, which takes significant memory from your computer. So this instruction will keep will help you to clean up after you're done using the container. Then dash IT means, means to create an interactive ETY session. It's like getting a shell into the container. Then dash P means to map port 8000 from your computer to port 8000 from the container. Rust JSON is the name of the container and Rust JSON Raw Docker is the name of the image. Excellent. So now we are inside the container and we can see that Cargo is installed and everything as expected. But let's go ahead and run our application. So now our application is running. Let's go ahead and hit it with the, with the browser. Let's see what comes up. Oh, that didn't work. The reason is that the Rocket application is bound to localhost within the container, which for practical purposes, you can see it as a different computer than your local host. So how do we fix that? Well, there's a configuration file that we need to add so that it all works. Now, the problem is that, as you can see in the Docker image, we are copying the contents of the current directory into app. That implies that after we modify the code, we'll have to rebuild all this. You can see how, how this could be a problem because it's a very slow development cycle. So now I'll show you how to, instead of copying things from your computer into the image, we 
bind them using a volume. So this is the first iteration of our Docker file. I'm calling it dockerfile.localdevelopment. And you can see that the only difference is that I removed, I removed the line that copied the current folder into the container. And also I added Cargo Watch. Cargo Watch is an excellent tool so that you can modify the, the code, then upon saving the code, Cargo Watch will pick up that as a signal to recompile. So it, it's all about speed. It's all about making your development cycle faster and quicker as possible. Now let's go ahead and build our new container. So you can see that I didn't change anything other than the name of the image and the Docker file to use. Now I'm selecting dockerfile.localdevelopment instead of raw. Great. Now let's go ahead and run it. Here's where we will define the volume that we want to use to mount our, like for all sake, some purposes, our computer into the container. This is gonna be kind of neat, guys. Let's give it a shot. So let me just clear this, paste the command, and I'll walk you through it. So Docker run, then RM, we discussed it before, IT, same deal. Now you can see that the biggest difference is that I'm using the mount option. And here what I'm saying is I want you to bind the current directory to the slash app folder. Let's see what happens. Fantastic. So now the system won't work because we haven't fixed the configuration. But if I change the source code, then we shall see how the code will recompile. So let me just uh, add some stupid stuff like YOLO. It will obviously complain because YOLO is not valid Rust code, unfortunately. All right, so that's pretty pretty cool. And I happen to have a, a rocket configuration file sitting over here, so let me just copy it over. So here we can say we can see that the system will default to running the, the rocket application as development, and then we can see how now instead of being bound to localhost, is bound to 0, 0.0.0, .0, .0, which means that the rocket server will listen on all interfaces available to the container. Okay, so I, I spent some time reading the code and it seems like the base URL for this application is movies. So let's go ahead and go to movies. And there you go. Now we're running our a Rust application within the container, and then let's go ahead and change this title over here and see if it refreshes on its own. So let's look for Pulp Fiction. Let's add one more movie, which I really like. Is that how you spell it? I sure hope so. It's aliens. So that's one thing about Dario. He loves aliens. There you go. So it should recompile on its own. And then... There you go. Aliens. Yeah. Pretty cool, eh? Okay, so here, here you can see that my terminal is attached to the container. If you want to detach it, you have to run control P, Q. There you go. So now it's still running, but now it's detached. If you look at Docker PSA, just expand this a little bit, clean it, clear it. There you go. So we can see that our container is running. And then if we wanted to stop it, then we can stop it like this. Rust JSON. Let's give it a second. There you go. So 
Obviously, typing this kind of stuff can be a little bit cumbersome. That's why Security Union recommends defining make files. So as you can see, we defined a make file which contains common commands that you might want to run, such as build, run, stop, and we haven't discussed the cut production image, but I'll tell you everything about it shortly. Let's just try to run a couple of things over here. So if I run make local top, it says that the container does not exist. So let's say let's say make local run. So you can see that running make local run is the same as executing this big script, this big command line. So pretty convenient, huh? All right, guys, so this was our first session using Docker. In the next session, we will look at Docker Compose, which is a command to run multiple containers and interconnect them uh, using a single line of code, which is pretty amazing. Then, after that, I'll show you how to use Kubernetes to run your containers into Google Cloud or Amazon Web Services. If you want to check out a real application that uses Rust, in production, then go download Armory. Armory is a location sharing application that uses end to end encryption. You can download it for iPhone or for Android. Thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next video.